This is Bally's Next Famous Chef. We're halfway through the competition. Everyone's getting ready and moving ahead. Mushrooms. This is making me hungry. Oh, black beans. I started eating a lot of those recently. They're delicious. I love them. I'm sure this is going to be delicious. I wonder if I can get away with just like scooping a little bit. And... No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to chance it. <laughs> and let's see what Vanity's up to right now. Can you give us some information on the pesto you're making? Uh, it's just regular basic pesto. So all it has is basil, pine nuts, salt, and pepper, and cheese. And I'll be adding the olive oil in a little bit. Looks like Vanity is struggling with that food processor. Hope she can get it working soon. We don't want her falling behind. Enrique, on the other hand, looks like he's right on schedule. Enrique, I see that you're done with your chicken. Is Actually, this good? It's not done. Not it's, done? It's uh, cooked in two parts. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to debone it now. I'm going to chop it up, and then I'm going to cook it in the apple juice. We noticed some aromas kind of strange. And can you tell us what's going on? I had accidentally uh, put the heat on too high, so my rice got a little away from me. But luckily, I was cooking a large amount, so I have enough to go ahead and present for the competition. Well, good luck. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Cynthia has already fried all the tapillas. Yes, I did. I fried them in olive oil, uh, a little bit of olive oil. And right now, I'm just patting them dry to get some of the oil excess off. So do you think you're going to win, Cynthia? Of course. I think the way I serve them, I mean, I do serve them with uh, white uh, rice and black beans, and that makes it a little bit unique. Finally found where Joelle is at. Working on my pesto. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, that's just the parsley, some coriander seed, and lemon infused um, olive oil. That's the virgin olive oil. It was supposed to be cilantro, and I completely messed up and got brought the wrong herb. So I got coriander, which um, not many people know, but it's a cilantro seed. So I'm hoping that kind of fixes everything. That sounds very good. Well, you may be developing a new recipe and winning with it. Good luck. We all make mistakes and try new ingredients in our recipes. It's all about custom creations. But when it comes to accidents, this man can't relate. It's this good. was no accident. I don't know. <laughs> Moving forward, Cynthia has already removed the chicken from the broth. What's the difference between chunking and shredding your chicken? Um, it, it's just a preference. I started chopping it. Um, my mother got dentures some time back. She's now up in age. And uh, when I cook them this way, it makes it much easier for her to eat. Beautiful. And the kids love them. The plating process has already started. Look at the beauty of this. Is this the way you serve it for your daughters? Actually, yeah. The side salad looks very nice, but I want to know a little bit more about the mashed potatoes cooking on the stove top. Do the mashed potatoes have anything special in them other than butter? No, just garlic. Just the garlic mash. That's garlic it. mash. I don't mind if I do. Whoops, looks like we made a mistake at the store and picked up some flat leaf parsley instead of cilantro over there. Um, we're going to try to make a pesto that's supposed to taste like cilantro, but it's made with parsley. It looks like he has made some adjustments. The pesto may turn out right or taste good, but probably not going to be exactly what he was looking for when he had this plan laid out. I love that Cynthia's really packing those enchiladas full of chicken. Should have some great flavor with just a touch of cheese. Little concerned about the fact that she chose to put a canned green chili sauce on there. But we'll see how it ends. If that filling's good, she still might be able to pull through with a great dish. Gabriel looks like he's got a pretty good presentation going on over there, but I do have a little bit of concern. He's got a lot of time left. It's pretty hot in the kitchen. He might find those greens start to wilt on him, but we'll have to see what happens in the end. And we're here back with Cynthia. Cynthia, where are the enchiladas? They're in the oven right now. Uh, I put the foil on for the first five minutes and I take it off to get everything melted on top. Seems like that strategy is working out for you. 
Let's check up on Vanity. In Vanity, were we able to get that machine working? No, we weren't. But so, there is um, another... I'm skipping it because I tried all of them already and they're still not working. So I'm skipping the pesto. Really? None of the food processors work? We're getting ready to finish this. It's only 10 minutes left. How are you doing? I see that it's practically assembled. Is that going into the oven still? Yes. How, how long are you going to put it in there? How much time do you need? Uh, 15, but I'm hoping 5 will be fine. Thinking it'll be okay. Are you cranking up the heat to help I, you with the time? Yeah. Albert, I'm getting nervous. I know, me too. Some <laughs> of these guys don't look like they're going to finish. Everything is under control. I'm not nervous at all. I'm perfectly fine. Whether they're nervous or not, the cooks are down to their final minutes. The pressure is on to put any final touches and garnishes. Which of the cooks will move to the final? And who will have a chance to be declared the Valley's next famous chef? 30 seconds left. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The final dishes look amazing. Our chef judges have a tough decision to make. Who's it going to be? The enchilada suizas, the chicken medallions, the pasta, the French bread pizza, or the Asian-inspired apple chicken? We'll see what the judges have to say after the break. Stay tuned to News Center 23. The cook-off continues on Valley's Next Famous Chef. Brought to you by Shaw Eye Center and South Texas College.